Hey everybody, it's the 3D Printing Professor, and let's answer the second most common question that I get. What 3D printer would you recommend I buy? What 3D printer should you buy is one of the most common questions that people have about 3D printing, and it's also one of the hardest ones to put down on a video because it becomes so quickly outdated. Almost as soon as I record a video making a recommendation, it's too late. There are better printers and newer printers coming out, and so any recommendation is outdated. I could tell you about what I have experience with, I've got an old replicator that's been going for four years. I bought an MP Select Mini, which I absolutely love. I also have experience with Flash Forge and Lulzbot machines, including the Tab 6 recently. I've even got experience with the high-end machines, the Fortis machines, the, the 3D systems, and the light curing polymer machines. I've had some hands-on experience seeing them work and holding the prints that they've created. I've even been in workplaces where we used them on a regular basis. So I have a lot of experience and I could tell you about that, but I think that the better thing to do would be to give you a general outline of how you can figure out the answer to this question yourself so that this video will not go out of date the moment I record it. So the right question to ask is, how do I find out for myself what 3D printer to buy? And the answer is, it's real simple. You have to research, choose one, research some more, and then buy with confidence. Now the first pass of research that you're going to do is a very broad pass. You want to hit up as many sources as you can and find out about as many different printers as you can. Go ahead and research the ones that you're not even going to do, that you know that you're not going to do from the outset because either they're too expensive or they're the wrong type of technology or they're, they're not the sort of thing that you've heard of or they're for a different, whatever, whatever you are, are thinking of at least look at those printers and you want to analyze them quickly. Now 3D Hubs and Make Magazine are a great source of overview information about 3D printers with a lot of information about people who are actually using those printers on a day-to-day -day basis so they're a great source for information. Also company reps of the people who make these 3D printers they will love to talk to you about their 3D printers don't stop at one or two 3D printers. Make a nice long list about the 3D printers that you're looking at. I like to compare 3D printers quickly in my head using this sort of graph system, this sort of three axis graph. And on each axis of this graph, I have the price of the 3D printer with free being the very far edge of it. The capability of the 3D printer, this is a combination of of what it can produce, including the size of the build platform, the number of materials that it can use, how well it can print, and how high detailed it can print. And then on the third axis, we have ease of use. And this includes how easy are the menus to navigate, how easy is it to repair, and how much does the maintenance cost, and the reliability of the printer. No 3D printer is going to have 100% on any of these subjects. In order for them to have 100% on the, the price, they would have to be free. And come on, how often is a 3D printer free? For 100% on the capability, it would pretty much have to be the replicator from Star Trek, where you could tell it that you want to have a, a cup of a seeped beverage and it'll produce it with the cup and everything. Or you could tell it that you want an electronic device and it'll come with batteries included which no 3D printer could do, right? And on the ease of use, it would, well, again, pretty much have to be the replicator from Star Trek and be voice activated or be able to read your mind. <laughs> but that said, this is an entirely subjective scale, and so I, it will change as time goes on. But I think that I'm going to, when I talk to people about 3D printers in the future and review them, use this similar system. So if I were reviewing my replicator one, it would look like this. And it only looks like this because I got this printer for free, so it does that impossible free thing. If I were actually paying for it, well, not that you could buy this printer, but if I were buying a comparable FlashForge machine, it would look like this, which is a pretty good triangle to have. My MP Select Mini, on the other hand, looks like this. A little bit less capable, a little bit easier to use, but a lot cheaper. 
On the other hand, if I were to buy like a Fortis machine, uh, a high-end industrial 3D printer, well, those are super expensive, so it goes way down on the cost. But they're actually fairly easy to use and extremely capable, so their triangle looks like this. Now, this is a subjective system. More area in the triangle does not necessarily mean a better printer. It's what it means to you. If the most important thing to you is a 3D printer that's capable and is fast and can do what you need it to, then that will weigh more heavily on your decision. This is just a way for me to quickly look at the printers and make a snap decision about, well, okay, it compares okay here, but not as okay here. And it's not really... Uh, uh, comprehensive in any way. So what about a kit printer? Well, those are generally lower in price, but their ease of use score goes way down because you have to spend so much time building them and a lot of times repairing them. And that actually drives the price up just a little bit because those repairs cost money too. So it gets factored both into the ease of use and into its price. Yeah, the price goes down, but then it goes back up just a little bit because it's a kit. Now, again, if it's valuable to you to learn how a 3D printer works, if this is a learning experience, then that is not going to matter. Subjective. What about a Kickstarter? How does a Kickstarter grade on here? Well, first of all, you got to remember that Kickstarter is not an investment. It's a pledge. You believe in the people. You believe in what they're doing. You're giving money to them, and you're hoping that you're getting something back, but there's, there's no guarantee that what you're getting back. And the thing is, with Kickstarters, there's a lot of unknowns. Not only the time that it will come to you, but is it actually going to be a good printer or a bad printer? You, you The cost is mostly fixed, but is it going to actually be as capable as they say, or is it going to be constantly falling apart and so it's kind of a schrodinger's printer it's simultaneously the best thing that never existed and maybe the worst and so you have to decide on that triangle where you think it's going to land and give it a fudge factor and consider the worst and best case scenarios as you do it now again this is all up to you and I don't want to tell you how to do it. I just want to tell you how I do it. The point is to do a broad search at a lot of printers, analyze them quickly, and once you've seen a bunch of them, pick one. Just, just one of them and you say, this is the 3D printer that I want to use. Now we go back into a second research pass. And in this second research pass, you focus on that printer. You find others who are already using that printer if you can. You find uh, uh, experiences, you find user groups either on Facebook or Reddit or Google groups, wherever people are getting together and talking about these 3D printer. These are going to be your people. These are going to be the people who are going to help you use your printer the best you can. And are these your people? Can you tolerate this bunch of people? This is really hard with a Kickstarter because there's not much community. So you do your research on the company. How are these people? Do they have a history? Will they deliver all of these things? You focus in on your research and spend some time on it. And that's the important part. Spend a little bit of time. Don't just make a snap decision. Think about it a little bit. If after this second research phase you realize, oh, guys, this isn't the printer that I want. This thing is going to fall apart on me. Don't abandon 3D printing. You looked at a whole bunch of printers. Go back and pick another one and do that research again. Again, I'm encouraging you to take some time and think about this decision. Then once you've looked at the printers and you've looked at the people who are using them and you've seen their experience, you've seen the prints that they're making, or you've talked to a company rep and they've convinced you that this, this is a good printer, then go ahead and buy with confidence because you've done your research and you know that this is going to be the right printer for you or start saving for the printer. But when you're ready, buy with confidence. If you follow these steps and research, pick, research some more, you know that the printer you're going to buy is the right printer for you and you can be confident moving forward that you've made the right step. Also, you've given yourself time to think about 3D printing in general and visualize how you're going to use it and that will make you more successful in 3D printing as well. So, I hope that this has helped you. If there's anything that I missed or anything that you thought of as you were watching this, go ahead and leave me a comment. I love to hear those. And if you have any other questions, 
please reach out to me. I'd love to be able to let you know my experiences. As always with these 3D Printing 101 videos, if you need more information, hit up my blog where I'm doing a full write-up on this stuff. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, safety first. And I'll see you next time.